Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today we're going on a bit of a treasure hunt. Oh, a treasure hunt. Well, sort of. We're diving into the world of e-commerce okay. and data science to see what hidden gems we can uncover. Sounds intriguing. I'm ready to dig in. You actually shared some research with us about an online store that sells military gear. Right. And how they use data to increase their sales. It's really fascinating stuff. Yeah, it is. It's pretty cool how they did it. I have to admit, when I first saw the words military gear and data mining together, I wasn't quite sure what to expect. I can understand that. It does sound a bit uh, unexpected. Right. Like, are we talking about soldiers crunching numbers in a war room? Haha, <laughs> not quite. This case study is really about how any business, no matter how big or small, yep. can use data to really understand what their customers are buying uh -huh. and then use that knowledge to sell even more. That's the key. So it's like taking that people who bought this also bought that section you see online and giving it a bit of military precision, like I, a data driven approach to making those suggestions even smarter. Exactly. You hit the nail on the head. This particular store wanted to get better at suggesting additional items to customers. Okay. Right at the checkout, you know, like the classic cross-selling technique. Yeah, yeah, I get it. And they used a technique called association rule mining to do it. Okay. They actually followed a framework called CRISPM. CRISPM. Yeah, and used an algorithm called a priori. Okay, CRISPM and a priori. Those sound a little intimidating, I'm not going to lie. They sound a lot more complicated than they really are, trust me. Okay, good. I was about to ask if we needed like a decoder ring or something for this deep yeah. dive. <laughs> not at all. Think of CRISPDM as our treasure map. It guides us through the whole process of finding those valuable insights. Right, the treasure map, I like that. And a priori, well, that's our trusty metal detector. It helps us sift through all the data. I see, I see. And pinpoint exactly where that treasure is buried. I love that analogy. Okay, so let's start with the business itself. Sure. What kind of online store are we talking about here? So this case study focuses on an entrepreneur mm -hmm. who's running an online store that sells military gear. Okay, so camouflage, boots, that kind of stuff. Exactly. But here's the twist. They're using a drop shipping model. Drop shipping. Yeah, they source their products from sites like Alibaba and AliExpress. Oh, so they don't actually have a warehouse full of all this stuff. Nope. That's pretty smart. It is. It allows them to offer a huge variety of products yeah. without all the overhead that comes with traditional retail, you know, yeah. like having a giant warehouse. Right, right. So less risk, less cost. It, That's clever. Exactly. But just like any business owner, they were looking for ways to increase their sales to make things even better. Of course, makes sense. That's where this idea of understanding which products customers often buy together came in. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. If you know someone is buying, say, a tactical vest, you might also suggest some pouches or a hydration pack. Exactly. Classic cross-selling, but they're using data to take it to the next level. Exactly. They want to make those suggestions more targeted, more relevant to the customer. So to do this, they needed to analyze their sales data. And for this study, they had a year's worth of transaction data from their online store. A year's worth, wow. Okay, so we're talking about data on what products are purchased, yeah. how much they cost, oh. and wait a minute, does this data include like personal information about the customers? That's a great question, and yeah, it's a really important one too. Yeah. Got to address privacy concerns, you're right. Yeah, for sure. In this case study, they took steps to protect customer privacy by anonymizing the data before doing any analysis. Anonymizing, how do they do that? They used something called a hashing technique. Okay. To make sure that you couldn't identify individual customers from the data. So it's like they're looking at the map of where the treasure is, yeah. but they don't have the names of the individual treasure hunters. Precisely. They could see the patterns of what was selling together yeah. without knowing specifically who bought what. Okay, that makes sense. Protects people's privacy. So they've got this mountain of data. Right. A year's worth. Yeah. What's the next step? How do they make sense of it all? Well, just like a real treasure hunt, you need to prepare your tools before you start digging. Ah. Right so here. the next step was data preparation, cleaning and organizing the data to make it ready for analysis. So no scrubbing the decks, but definitely scrubbing the data. Uh-huh. <laughs> exactly. Making sure it's all nice and tidy for our data mining adventure. I like it. So they removed any incomplete or irrelevant entries, made sure the data types were all consistent, and most importantly, they grouped the items bought by each customer into transactions. Transaction. Yeah, for the algorithm. It's like sorting all the clues into neat little piles. Okay, so the data is prepped. It's ready to go. Now we need to choose the right tool for the job. 
That's where a priori comes in, right? You got it. But before we jump into that, I'm curious, what do you think might be the biggest challenge when you're trying to find these connections between products in a data set like this? Well, I imagine it could get pretty overwhelming trying to spot those connections manually. Yeah. Especially with so many different products and an entire year's worth of data. Right. It'd be like trying to find a pattern in a sea of receipts. You're exactly right. And that's where the power of an algorithm like a priori comes in. It can sift through all that data so much faster okay. and more efficiently than we ever could. So it's like our superpower data detective. Right? Yeah. Spotting those subtle clues and connections. Exactly. Now, there are other algorithms out there, Okay. but a priori was the perfect fit for this case study. Good. It's known for being really straightforward and efficient, especially when you're dealing with smaller data sets. All right, so a priori is our tool of choice. Mm -hmm. But how do we actually make sense of what it finds? Yeah. How do we know which connections are worth paying attention to? That's where those three key metrics we talked about earlier come in. Support, confidence, and lift. They help us measure the strength and significance of the associations that a priori covers. Okay, let's break those down. What exactly is support? So imagine you're looking at all those receipts, right? A year's worth of receipts huh. from this military gear store. Support basically tells you how often certain products okay. are sold together on the same receipt. So if we see that a lot of people are buying, let's say, tactical boots and a camouflage backpack together, uh -huh. that would have high support. Exactly. It's a measure of how popular those product pairings are. Okay, that makes sense. Now, what about confidence? So confidence tells us the likelihood okay. that if a customer is buying one item, they're also going to buy the other. Okay. So let's go back to our example. Someone's buying those tactical boots. Okay. How confident are we that they're also going to buy that camouflage backpack? Got it. So high confidence means there's a strong chance those two items are going to end up in the same shopping cart. Exactly. But here's where it gets even more interesting. All right. Lyft tells us how much more likely... Okay. Someone is to buy those two items together. Okay. Than if they were buying them completely separately. It's like a measure of how much those items lift each other's sales. Okay, so high lift, those tactical boosts and that camouflage backpack, they're like a dynamic duo. Exactly. You got it. Buying one significantly increases the chances of buying the other. Precisely. And these three metrics, uh -huh. support, confidence, and lift, yeah. work together to help us identify the most valuable associations that we can use for cross-selling. All right, Patrick's explained. So what did a priori actually uncover? What kind of treasures did we find buried in that data? Well, since the data set wasn't huge, right. the overall support was a bit low, meaning not every product combination happened that often. But even with that, they found several rules with high lift and confidence, oh, okay. meaning there were some pretty strong connections hidden in the data. So even with a smaller data set, they were still able to find some real gems. Right. Can you give us an example of one of those strong connections that stood out? Sure. One pairing that really jumped out was, you guessed it, those tactical tennis shoes and that 40L military backpack. Huh. Of course. A priori found a really high lift value for this combination, meaning people buying those shoes were very likely to grab that backpack too. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. You're gearing up for a hiking trip, some outdoor adventure. Why not get both? Exactly. And those kinds of insights, that's where you can really boost sales. Yeah. Imagine you're about to buy those shoes and boom, you get a suggestion for the perfect backpack to go with them. It's like a win-win, right? <laughs> Happy customer, more sales for the store. Everybody's happy. Exactly. So we have all these valuable insights, but how do we actually get them onto the website? How does the store USE this info to make those smart recommendations? Yeah, that's a good question. That's where the implementation comes in. They took the information from a priori and built a custom API using a framework called Flask. API. Ah. Flask. Okay, hold on. I'm having flashbacks to my computer science class. Uh -huh. No worries. It's not that complicated. Uh, Think of an API as a messenger. It allows different software systems to talk to each other. Okay. In this case, the API is like a bridge between the data insights and the online store's website. So when I add those tactical shoes to my cart, the API is the one saying, hey, this person might also want that awesome backpack. You got it. It takes those association rules from yeah. a priori. Yeah. and uses them to trigger product recommendations wow. in real time. And Flask is just the tool they use to build this API. It's known for being pretty easy to work with. 
All right. So they're not recommending every possible combination, right? That would just be overwhelming. You're absolutely right. Too many recommendations wouldn't be a good thing. Yeah. They actually did some testing okay. and found that it was best to apply some filters to the association rules. So how do they decide which recommendations to show and which ones to keep hidden? They went back to those three key metrics we talked about earlier, support, confidence, and lift. By setting a minimum threshold for each metric, they made sure that only the most relevant and valuable recommendations were actually shown. So it's like fine-tuning that metal detector. Exactly. To make sure it's only picking up the strongest signals. Exactly. And they experimented with different thresholds okay. to find that sweet spot for their particular business. All right. So we've got our data. We've got a priori finding those connections and our API delivering those targeted recommendations. What about the store owner? Did they actually find this whole approach helpful? They did. In fact, they were really impressed with the results. Oh, good. Many of the findings made perfect sense to them, yeah. validating their own understanding of what their customers liked and wanted. So it was like the data was confirming their intuition, but in a more precise and data-driven way. Exactly. But here's the really cool part. The data also revealed some unexpected associations, oh. which prompted them to think about product pairings that they hadn't even considered before. So not only validating their existing knowledge, but also sparking new ideas. Right. Exactly. And potential opportunities. Exactly. That's one of the most powerful aspects of data science, you know, it can really challenge our assumptions and help us see things in a whole new light. It's like having a data savvy business partner who can spot those hidden patterns yes, that's, and opportunities that we might miss. That's a great way to put it. You mentioned earlier that this was a relatively small data set. It was. What if they had even more data to work with? Oh, that's a great point. With a larger data set, imagine the possibilities. They could potentially uncover even more valuable insights yeah. and refine their model even further. It's like having a bigger, more powerful metal detector, oh, right? Exactly. So you're bound to find even more treasure. You're going to find some amazing stuff. But even with this limited data set, they were still able to achieve some pretty impressive results. Could you give us some specific examples of how the store owner actually USD these insights? Absolutely. Remember that strong connection we found between the tactical tennis shoes and the 40L military backpack? Yeah, our dynamic duo. The store owner was actually able to use that insight to create some really effective marketing campaigns. Oh, okay. You know, like, targeted ads showing both items together, or maybe even a bundle discount. Yeah, smart. And with that API in place, they could make sure that those recommendations were shown to the right people mm -hmm. at the right time. It's all about personalization. It is. Creating a shopping experience that really guides customers towards the products that they're most likely to want. Exactly. It's like having a virtual shopping assistant uh -huh. that well, just well. knows exactly what you need before you even know it yourself. This all sounds pretty advanced. Is this kind of data-driven approach really feasible for smaller businesses? I mean, is this something they can realistically implement? Absolutely. Data science is becoming more and more accessible. That's good. And tools like a priori are actually easier to use than ever before. This case study is a perfect example yeah. of how a small business can leverage the power of data mm -hmm. to really gain a competitive edge. So it's not just for the big e-commerce giants anymore. Not at all. In fact, I'd say that smaller businesses might even have an advantage. Really? Why is that? Because they're often much closer to their customers, you know, yeah. have a better understanding of their needs. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> so what's next for our entrepreneurial treasure hunter? Where do they go from here? Well, the most obvious next step is to keep gathering more data. The more data you have, yeah. the more potential insights you can uncover. And then they can refine their model even further. So they've dip their toes in the data lake, and now they're ready to dive in headfirst. Exactly. And as they collect more data, they can start to explore even more advanced techniques like machine learning. Machine learning. <laughs> Sounds like a whole other deep dive. It is. We could definitely do a deep dive on that sometime. Yeah, maybe we'll save that for another episode. Sounds good. For now, I think we've covered a lot of ground. We have. We talked about association rule mining, the a priori algorithm, how to use those three key metrics. Support, confidence, lift yep to make sense of those connections and most importantly we saw how even a small business can turn data into action boosting sales and creating a better customer experience absolutely it all comes down to understanding customer behavior yeah 
And it's a powerful reminder that those valuable insights, yeah. they're often hidden within the data that we already collect. It's all about asking the right questions and having the right tools to uncover those hidden gems, right? Precisely. And as we saw in this case study, even a small data set can reveal some really valuable insights. Okay, I think it's time to wrap up this deep dive into the world of e-commerce and data science. But before we go, I have one last question. You mentioned earlier that they used a hashing technique to protect customer privacy. Right. Can you explain a bit more about how that works and why it's so important? Yeah. You mentioned earlier that they used a hashing technique to protect customer privacy. Right. Can you explain a bit more about how that works? Yeah, sure. And why it's so important? It's a great question. And, yeah. you know, anyone working with data, especially customer data, mm -hmm. needs to think about privacy very carefully. For sure. Hashing is basically like creating a secret code. Oh. for each customer's email address. So it transforms the original email right. into something that's unreadable. Yeah, exactly. It turns it into a string of random characters right. that's virtually impossible to decode. So even if someone got their hands on the data, right. they wouldn't be able to figure out who those customers actually were. Exactly. They wouldn't be able to connect the data back to any individual person. So it's like they're replacing the names on the treasure map with a set of coordinates. That's a great way to put it. That only they can understand. Exactly. It ensures that no one looking at that data can tell who bought what. They can just see the patterns. Right. The patterns of what was bought together, but not the individual buyers. So they can have their cake and eat it too. Yeah. Right? <laughs> they get those valuable insights without compromising anyone's personal information. Exactly. It's a great example of balancing the power of data analysis with the responsibility of protecting customer privacy. It's really amazing to think about all the other data that's out there. Oh, yeah. All the potential insights just waiting to be discovered. It's true. I mean, this case study, it's really just the tip of the iceberg. Right. We generate so much data every single day. Yeah. And a lot of it we don't even use. But with the right tools and techniques like we've been talking about, uh -huh. businesses can unlock some incredible value. Absolutely. They can really transform that data into a competitive advantage. It all starts with asking the right questions, doesn't it? It does. What patterns are hidden in our data? What can we learn about our customers? How can we use that knowledge to make better decisions, to improve our products, to grow our business? Those are the questions that every business leader should yeah. be asking themselves. This whole deep dive has been a real eye-opener for me. I'm looking at data in a whole new way. That's great to hear. Like a giant puzzle just waiting to be solved. And the best part is you don't need a PhD in data science to get started. That's good to know. There are so many resources available. Oh, yeah, for sure. Online courses, user-friendly software tools. Yeah. It's never been easier to dive into the world of data. So if anyone's listening to this and they're curious about what they could learn for their own data, mm -hmm. what's your advice? Just take that first step. You might be amazed at what you discover. Well, I know I've learned a lot today. This has been a fantastic journey into the world of e-commerce and data science. We talked about association rule mining, the a priori algorithm, and those key metrics, right. support, confidence, and lift. Yep, the three amigos. And we saw how understanding customer behavior can help businesses increase sales, improve customer satisfaction, and we even touched on the importance of responsible data analysis uh -huh. and protecting customer privacy, which is huge. I think the biggest takeaway for me is that data science is for everyone. It's not just for big tech companies. Any business can use these tools to gain a competitive advantage. Now, here's a final thought for everyone listening. What data are you sitting on? What secrets are hiding in your data? What patterns and behaviors are waiting to be discovered? Food for thought. Thanks for joining us on the deep dive on the deep dive.